everybody and welcome back to my channel and today I want to talk about the all party parliamentary group on autism. This is a group that meets within parliament to discuss the needs of autistic people and how to support autistic people and people with Asperger's syndrome better within the local community and I thought this was an important video to do as an autistic woman and just as a way to educate you all on what the group does and what they stand for. So the AP PGA is a cross party of MPs and members of the House of Lords who work together to push autism up the agenda within Parliament. The National Autistic Society performs a role as secretary to the group. So I'm just going to scan down quickly. The APPGA was set up in February 2000. Its role was to campaign in Parliament for greater awareness of autism and to lobby the government for improved services for autistic people and their parents and carers. Its secretaries provided by the National Autistic Society. Parliament requires all party groups to have an official objective, that is to raise awareness of issues affecting people, such as affecting autistic people and people with Asperger syndrome, their families and carers to raise parliamentary awareness, to campaign for changes, to government policy to benefit autistic people and people with Asperger syndrome, and to improve diagnosis and support for autistic people and people with Asperger's. This objective is being reviewed every year. So what is a APPGA? APPGA groups are informal cross-party interest groups of MPs and peers interested within a particular subject. APPGs do not have any power to make laws or are not funded by Parliament. There is a great number of APPGs covering many and diverse fields, such as health, education, transport, defence, finance, the media and sport. Some APPGAs have existed for many decades, whereas others come and go in response to issues of the day. The APPG on autism has been existent since 2000. For more information, I can link you to the Parliament website, which I will link down below in my video description. So I'm just going to scan down a bit now. Um, yeah, so what, what FAQs have been answered? So can you join the APPGA? Only members of Parliament and members of the House of Lords can be members of the APPGA. You can join the distribution list and be invited to APPG meetings by emailing a certain email address, which I can attach in the video description. However, not all MPs can join an all-party group. Parliamentary rules dictate that government ministers are unable to join all party groups. Can members of the public come to APPGA meetings? Yes, public meetings at the APPGA PGA and Parliament are open to all. Can the APPGA introduce legislation or hold debates? No, all party groups are able to meet in Parliament but are not able to introduce their own legislation or hold their official debates. So these are just some common questions that have obviously been asked um, from people in the public. Can I join the APPGA advisory group? As vacancies arise, the advisory group jointly approach a person who will maintain the skills, knowledge and insight, balance of the group as a whole. The advisory group is not an elected group. Uh, you can email an email address saying while you're interested, but please note vacancies are few and far between. The group is voluntary and members are not paid. Why is all this on the National Autistic Society website and are they members of this APPGA? The National Autistic Society performs the role of the secretary to the APPGA, but is not a member and has no voting rights. This means it performs functions of the APPGA, such as the website or keeping a list of up-to-date members. The decisions that APPGA makes are made by the chair and its officers. So does the National Autistic Society run the APPGA? The National Autistic Society is the secretary. All decisions are made by chair and officers which are elected on the AGM. The APPGA advisory group also contains a number of other organisations and individuals that are independent of the National Autistic Society. So how are the members decided? Which is a key crucial question in my opinion. It says parliamentary rules dictate that all party group members must have an annual general meeting every year. The AGM is open to all members of Parliament and members of the House of Lords and there are strict rules governing what you need to do that in AGM in order to make sure that the all-party group official. The AGM will then vote to elect the chair and the following officers. So how does the APPGA decide on which topics to hold meetings on? There's no one way that the APPGA decides this. Sometimes the meetings are in response to government legislation or new consultation. Other times it's because a member has been called a meeting on a specific topic. The APPGA advisory group often runs the consultations asking people what we should be talking about. So can I speak at an APPGA meeting? 
Every meet at the APPGA has someone with personal experience, speaking whether it's a parent, care or autistic person. However, the APPGA is always looking for case studies. Please email your story and they'll keep it on their file. So, yeah, that's kind of what they do in a snapshot. So what I'll do is I'll attach all the links down below in my video description. Please like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll be back next time. Bye!